Welcome to Pepper and Fuchs basic training on encoders. The basic training will cover encoder shaft and flange types, basic principles of incremental and absolute encoders, and the different types of outputs and protocols. The three shaft options are solid, hollow, and recess hollow. The solid shaft encoder has a simpler construction as compared to the hollow and recessed hollow shaft. Higher IP protection is possible. You will need a coupler to attach the encoder shaft to the rotating shaft that needs to be monitored. Overall, there would be more accessories that you will need as compared with the hollow and recessed hollow shaft encoders. The flange options for the solid shaft are servo flange, which could also be called synchro flange, clamping flange, and square flange. Each flange type has different mounting options. The clamping flange and square flange are more common in the US. The servo flange is more common in Europe. The hollow shaft is more compact as compared to the solid shaft. Because you don't need a coupler or mounting bracket, it makes the mounting faster and easier. The construction is more complex and is usually slightly higher in price as compared to a similar solid shaft encoder. The hollow shaft has a hole completely through the unit, so it could be placed in between other parts such as the motor and brake. A torque rest is required with hollow and recessed hollow shaft encoders. This prevents the radial rotation of the encoder. The recessed hollow shaft encoder has a blind bore hole that does not go completely through the encoder. There would be a finite depth to this bore hole. This drawing shows a hollow shaft and recessed hollow shaft. The hollow shaft shows a hole through the encoder and the recessed hollow shaft shows a blind hole depth of 21 millimeters. The recessed hollow shaft will have the option of radial or axial cable exit and the hollow shaft will have only a radial cable exit option. The next section is for the principle of operation, output types, and a different series available for incremental rotary encoders. The optical rotary encoder has an LED with a photoreceiver array that will receive the light and then be amplified and conditioned. There is a code disk that will determine the resolution and it has slots or clear spots that allow light to go through and oblique or covered spots that will prevent light from going through. This slide shows the type of signal generated when the light goes through the code disk or if the light is blocked. So if you have 360 clear and blocked segments on the code disk, you will get 360 pulses per turn. The number of pulses per turn will help determine the resolution. A single channel output encoder is used for counting or speed. You will be unable to detect the direction of rotation with only one output. When someone requests a quadrature encoder, they are looking for an encoder with two outputs that are 90 degrees out of phase from each other. Encoders with quadrature output can be used for speed, direction, counting up, counting down, and measuring. These are the typical applications for incremental encoders. An incremental encoder with two channel outputs and 90 degrees phase shift can be used to determine rotational direction. In this example, the clockwise rotation A channel is leading the B channel, which indicates clockwise. When the encoder is turned counterclockwise, B channel leads A. These signals go to a counter, PLC, or some type of controller, and these devices compare the two signals. Channel A and B output can give you speed and direction. Zero channel will output one pulse per revolution. The zero pulse can be used to count the number of rotations and homing to start position on a machine. The encoder with inverted channels of A, B, and zero are used so unwanted noise can be filtered. A device such as a controller or PLC will subtract the normal and inverted signal to eliminate the noise pulse. A few common encoder terms are TTL, HTL, and PPR. TTL is an acronym for Transistor Transistor Logic. This is for a 0 to 5 volt DC range where 0 to 0.8 volts is a low and 2 to 5 volts DC is a high. The RS-422 output can be used if a TTL output is requested. The HTL is an acronym for High Transistor Logic. 
This is usually 10 to 30 volts DC and push-pull output be substituted. Pulses per revolution, or PPR, is how many pulses are on the incremental code disk. If you know the PPR of an incremental encoder, it can help you determine the resolution. The push-pull output can be wired for sourcing, PNP, or syncing, NPN output, compatible with most PLC and counter 24 volt DC inputs. The RS422 line driver output is used for longer cable runs and has inherent noise cancellation because of differential driver and receiver. Another type of encoder output is sine-cosine. This is usually used for speed, direction, zero position. It also can be used for interpolation, which will increase the PPR per turn. Another use for sine-cosine is that position can also be determined from this analog signal. The sine-cosine outputs are analog sinusoidal waveforms, and interpolation can be used for pulse counts up to 50,000. The MNI-20 has two parts, the magnetic code wheel and the magnetoresistance sensor. It has no bearings or moving parts, so it has a very long service life. The MNI-20 is a lower cost version compared to MNI-40. The MNI-40 also has two parts, the magnetic code wheel and the magnetoresistance sensor. It has no bearings or moving parts, so it has a very long service life. Compared to the MNI-20, the MNI-40 has a higher temperature range, higher environmental rating, and a two-color LED to provide a clear indication of the magnetic wheel alignment and diagnostics. The T-series encoders have 5 to 30 volts DC and is a lower cost option. Applications that need 1,024 pulses per revolution or lower should look first at the T-series. Different housing diameters and shaft options are available. In the T-series, the TVI-50 is a solid shaft 50 millimeter housing diameter. The THI-58 is a hollow shaft 58 millimeter housing diameter with a half inch diameter option available and the TVI-58 is a solid shaft with a 58 millimeter housing diameter. The R-series has more options with higher pulses per revolution, up to 50,000. In the R-series, the RHI-58 as a hollow shaft with a half inch diameter option and higher pulses per revolution is possible. The RSI 58 is a recessed hollow shaft with a 58 millimeter diameter housing. The RHI 90 hollow shaft with a one inch diameter option. And the RVI 84 is a solid shaft with a Namur output and a 78 millimeter diameter housing. The sine cosine output encoder is usually used for speed direction and zero position. It also can be used for interpolation, which could be used to increase the pulses per revolution per turn. Another use for sine cosine output is that position can also be determined from the signal. For absolute rotary encoders, we will discuss the principle of operation in different interface types. The single turn optical absolute encoder works similar to the optical incremental encoder. Both have a LED with photo receiver array which will receive the light and then be amplified and conditioned. There is a code disk that will determine the resolution and it has slots or clear spots that allow light to go through and oblique or covered spots that will prevent light from going through. But with the optical absolute encoder, the code on the disk is unique. This unique code disk will usually have 12 bits to 16 bits these unique code steps allow high resolution and you'll know exactly where the encoder is positioned. If there is a loss of power, you will not know the exact position unless you reset and execute a homing sequence with the machine. Since the absolute encoder has a uniquely coded disk, it will provide the exact location and no reset or homing sequence is needed. With a single turn encoder, after one complete turn, the code will repeat. The single turn encoders are usually used in applications that do not need to make multiple rotations. The multi-turn optical absolute rotary encoders are used for applications that need to know a unique position over multiple turns. A set of gears that are in the encoder keep track of the number of complete turns. The gears allow 12 bits, which is standard, to 
to 14 bits or 16,384 number of turns without repeating. With the maximum resolution per turn of 16 bits and the maximum number of turns which is 14 bits, you can have an encoder with 30 bits of information which will meet most application needs. When selecting an absolute encoder, the protocol or output also needs to be selected. The series nomenclature first letter indicates the protocol of the absolute encoder. E is for Ethernet, C is for CAN Open, J is for J1939, D is for DeviceNet. A is for SSI, P is for Profibus, F is for Parallel, B is for AS Interface, I is for current analog, and U is for voltage analog output.